welcome to the Earthworks Podcast, where our team will share the jargon of carbon from many of our turf friends from the past 30 years. Hello all and welcome to the Earthworks Podcast. This week I'm your host, Jack Higgins, and uh, I'm here in the clubhouse at North Jersey Country Club sitting across the table from golf course superintendent Dan Kilpatrick and assistant golf course superintendent James Sirico. Gentlemen, thank you. Yeah, Thanks for having us. Here. Yeah, yeah. You, I'm, you're, you're a guest on this podcast and I'm a guest of your club and I appreciate it. This is, uh, is going to be fun. Awesome. Because also we've been trying to do this for a long time. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Long time I, in the making. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> long time in the making. I've uh, I've asked you like I I probably asked you prematurely too because like you've got I, there's a great story to be told here about um, about the construction that you've done here at North Jersey over the last three years. I think the first time I asked you was probably like two years ago, and you were like. Dude, we're in the middle of this. <laughs> like, yeah. like it's not it's not time to kind of talk about it yet. But now this is two years later, and now's here we time. are. Now's the time. <laughs> so, um, so guys, cool. James, you've been on uh, the Earthworks Two Minute Turf Talk before. You kind of gave a, a really cool uh, testimony about the C three and the worm casting, which is great. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. And. Um, Quick question: or How's that? How's the pressure? Because we're having a very rainy second half of the season, and yeah, very high pressure. We actually just mowed today and had, you know, so plenty. Yeah, so plenty. <laughs> yeah. After three days of rain, yeah, there, there's not much rain. you can do. No. Yeah, we're sitting here at the very tail end of uh, tropical storm Ophelia. Yes. Um, and yeah, so uh, yeah, we've had like what? What did you guys say? Three inches of rain? Yeah, just shy. We had about it, two and a half here, but it's been just slow, steady three straight days so that'll do it to you yeah uh not not good for fall golf as you mentioned Dan. yeah it's it it's not what you want but oh well you deal with it mm. yeah always next fall yeah that's right <laughs> that's right so um i mean you i asked you also when i got here you have if you have a busy fall on the golf schedule coming right. up and you were like yeah we're trying to get a lot in and it seems to be a lot of kind of what I'm here for, which is to, to talk about the reopening of, of this 18-year-old, 18 18-hole 18 gem here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, 100-year-old, 18 Oh, wow, 100-year-old, 18-year-old gem, 18-hole yeah, gem. Yeah, it was yeah. uh, 2000, or... 1923 yeah, here, 1895 out on Sorry, no in Patterson. <laughs> no problem, no problem, I'll listen. Yeah, so, oh, okay. Yeah, this is like classical golf, classical country club that you're saying, um, yeah, so 1923 on this property. Right, opened here. Walter Travis's design is 1923 on this property. The Cliff, uh, Clifford Wenden Hat Clubhouse we're sitting in, also 1923. Oh. So it's the uh, we have our Centennial Gala coming up here uh, in wow. October. So a lot of big things going on. Oh, it's yeah. a huge year. Just yeah, a huge yeah, it's a huge year. Huge year. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so let's go back to the beginning of of the construction here. When did you start, and or when 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 did you guys start here at the club? Dan, you were here first, yeah, right? Yeah. So I started in two thousand and eighteen, um, and in two thousand and nineteen, we had interviewed a bunch of architects, and it was pretty clear right away that Brian Schneider was our guy, and um, that was that was who we were going with. There was no doubt. Um, mm -hmm. And I think um, ultimately, like, it took a while to kind of set in, in the phases and understand what we were doing. And the first phase was kind of reconstruct the green surrounds of original greens. So mm -hmm. take the, si the seven original greens that we have and then kind of work the rework the bunkers, take the bunkers out, remove the bunkers, adding mounds and... Um, the course has an interesting history with it, and the more that we dove into it, the more we realized that it wasn't your average golf course. Um, when they when they started to build it, it was supposed to cost them fifty thousand dollars to build it. Okay, and back in nineteen twenty three. Back in the twenties, yeah, and they started in twenty one um, building it, and it took a lot longer than they wanted. Um, they found a lot of rock. They found 
We're um, on top of a mountain here. Yeah, we're, I don't know what it is, but it is. It is a. It could be yeah. a miserable sight for some. You know? Oh yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. yeah. It's it, you're you're just built into the side of 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 a mountain here in mm-hmm. in North Jersey. A lot of lot of open rock face. Yeah. A lot of everything. You can't like that. dig up a head without finding a rock. Mm-hmm. You can't dig anywhere without finding yeah. a rock. And and they come in all shapes and sizes. So that was a problem for them a hundred years ago. Yeah, too. and that was that was the probably the the biggest issue that they ran into was the rock when they started building the golf course they ran into so many different obstacles and um you know they they opened up in 23 but they still had a lot of issues growing grass because they were still with just that kind of subsoil mm-hmm. and not really any sandy loam or there wasn't a a desirable soil no they had they had very little soil to begin with yep. probably until they were there was bedrock mm-hmm. and um and what's here is kind of like thick and shaly and mm-hmm. difficult to work with yeah and so the the interesting part of that was is as we continued to sort of look into the history of the golf club we we realized that there weren't a lot of bunkers and you know brian kind of at that point when we started talking to him he kind of said hey listen like when they start building golf courses and they start digging they realize really quick that bunkers Mm -hmm. aren't really the best solution Mm -hmm. to making the golf course difficult and um so rather than build uh sorry rather than dig they they built up and Ah. um as they started to build the golf course travis kind of threw these mounds together that you know as it matured it th- these mounds continued to grow and what was happening was is that the members were asked to bring a bag with them collect rocks wow. and dump them in these predetermined locations for mounds oh my oh this is so cool dude yeah yes yeah. S- so yeah the, the the members had a part in in designing the the golf course. oh it was their ish- initiation fee oh, wow. <laughs> it was part of their initiation yeah, yeah, fee yeah, it was, you had to yeah, yeah there oh, was <laughs> wow everybody had their pouch and yeah everyone had the pouch and that was what you yeah. had to do yeah um okay uh so 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 you still see those piles those piles out there or what so you can see you can see piles of rock within like within the holes and then there's the Brian Schneider mounds that he put back in to try and re re capture the the mounding and um I guess even build it towards today's game you know Mm -hmm. okay yeah yeah different distances and everything like that Mm -hmm. you would kind of mention um earlier today that the um that that right from the start this place kind of had to veer off of what the original intent or design was Mm -hmm. like in talking architecture wise um and i guess maybe this is part of it because because the land was so difficult to work with is that what you're saying yeah so i think there's two parts to it okay Um, i think you're correct in what you said but there was also another part of it that travis was supposed to build two courses here oh interesting. and this was supposed to be the premier championship golf course that he was going to build um and i think they ran into so many issues in construction and um i mean the property was severe like even in the history books they say like they couldn't get any caddies because caddies didn't want to walk up the hills like you know uh, it was treacherous it was treacherous property they they, this was intended to be a u.s open golf course uh or i I think along those lines i think it was supposed to be uh, Right. Pretty grand. Uh huh. Uh-huh. And, and I think it never lived up to the expectations of the membership. The, the property was always kind of, they struggled with growing grass. They struggled with getting rid of the rocks. It was kind of unsightly that the amount of trees that were on the property, you know, I think, I think ultimately, like, they fought that land for a long time to try and get it to a, be that golf course right and that you know in the 23 in 1923 they were building some pretty incredible golf courses and now you're struggling with growing grass now you're struggling with the things that you know kind of made it um it, it, i think they've always kind of uh 
fought that kind of condition you know, where you always wanted to be the Baltus Rawls and the sure you know but yeah yeah we you know, can't you stress fighting the property so hard yeah you can't stress enough for the for the listener that like Baltus rolls down in the valley mm -hmm. and and we are way up on the mountain here yeah probably i mean probably for for jersey we're probably like 2000 feet 1500 feet something mm -hmm. like that i don't know it's mm -hmm. pretty it's pretty far up so um travis you you brought up like there's a lot of wonderful golf courses being built in the in the 20s mm -hmm. um for a little bit of context james maybe you know um the do you know where where else was travis at that time where does north jersey land in his career well this was prior to hollywood i think i don't know for I, sure I, I, I don't it was all around the same sure. time i know he was doing consulting oh. work down at pine valley okay um which was then when he went to hollywood um, okay, so but also Hollywood Country Club down in Deal. Right. Okay. And I know that he was at Garden City, I believe, prior to here, doing some work, consulting work there when he was a member and um, kind of made his way over here to northern New Jersey. But Is, was he from was he from the metro area here? He, he was it, like he he was obviously from Australia first, oh, but oh, oh, oh. Yeah, <laughs> Australia yeah. first yeah. came over know. and but yeah. he lived I think he lived by Garden City. Yeah, he was in Long Island. Oh, yeah. cool, very cool. Yeah, so uh, so excellent. Okay, so now now you're, you're back in in 2019 and you're saying that you wanted to start you were starting with seven holes and and working the greens complexes on seven. Yeah. And and so, let's go right from the that w was that the first stage of the of the project. Did it yeah. continue with those seven? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So okay. so there was a couple decisions to be made there mm -hmm. at that point. I imagine like a architecture, and that was and, and Brian Schneider had that, and you, you you so and B grasses. What where did you go with that? So at that point, like the idea of of. Um, this phase was to take the original greens and we were to remove I, I think we removed what I think probably one two we'd removed about four bunkers in okay. this original phase and shifted other bunkers and rebuilt bunkers because you um, think a lot of those bunkers had come in, you know, after the yeah, time? Yeah, you know, like when you look at the original aerials and stuff, you can see where the bunkers situated and, you know, um, the idea of one of the best parts of Brian is, is that you have them on site and it gives you a plan, but his architectural freedom is, is there and you know when he starts to feel it and when he starts to work on the land and he adapts to it and i think you know his plan is 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 good for you know just a peace of mind but ultimately he, he kind of goes off a track with that which is um i think he, in this case a little bit more appropriate mm -hmm. um i think he just i think he needed to feel it a little bit and and see it and you know some of the um bunkers that he was working with he he, he actually found the, the original oh, layout wow. of them he could it was almost like a little architectural dig there oh wow yeah um, yeah yeah archaeologist yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 And wow so it was kind of a cool part of it but a lot of this was to expand the approaches it wasn't to touch the greens it was to build the bent grass around the greens so that it made your target look smaller but you still had a fairly significant, you know, area to, to work with. Okay, interesting. So, um, so, so you, so you're saying there was expansion of bent grass around in the green complex. You, you know. Or so it would essentially be the approaches, the approaches around the greens. The greens themselves would we wouldn't touch. Right. Um, just because they were original. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, like uh, he just he he built. He built around the greens as as chipping areas, short game areas that you know tested the the short game. Yeah, it made it fun. And yeah. there are steep slopes too. Yeah. It's, it's not as though it's just a, a flat surface coming off the side. You have some severe slopes that he took and shaved down from what was rough or, or a bunker face 
which is now all short grass mowing. Oh yeah, it's so beautiful out there. Like and and really must be really fun to play. And and I know that a lot of the listeners have have some sense of your golf course um, from your excellent social media content, James. You do some serious Twitter work and get a lot of really great. You do great drone work and good pictures. Plus, you've had you've had um, who's the golf the golf course photographer Evan here? Schiller. Yeah, yeah, Evan Schiller. You had him out here this summer, right? Yeah, he just was here a couple months ago. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, so so yes, you can you can get to see it. So okay, that was that that was when the winter of nineteen into twenty. That was actually uh, right before a, a miserable COVID. a miserable mm-hmm. date to pick. Oh yeah, my gosh. <laughs> we started yeah. in March of. March of 20. Oh my gosh, yeah, it was right this, then. It was this, we had started stripping everything like that first week of yeah, March. Right second outside week, the clubhouse, we, too. Yeah, we it were, was three and nine. Oh my gosh. And uh, we had Brian in for a week and the shit hit the fan. Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. yeah, and so when we had started, we were ready to go. We, we, we had everything kind of prep for them and we figured it was probably going to be a three or four week project and, right um we could do it with in play it was no big deal and, and then COVID hit and, oh my gosh um yeah there was a lot of little things that happened there that, that just that derailed us so did you have like bare earth out there without oh, yeah. anyone here no like, sand no oh no all the bunkers were were this, all the sand was taken out and Oh. Um, but thankfully, we were doing it in house. Yeah. This phase. Yeah. With just Brian, so it was just our small winter crew with him. So we didn't have a contractor variable to work with, which was right. nice. But I'm just still thinking about the slopes that you have and everything. You know, everything out there, and you know, you 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 strip everything out, and then it sits fallow, yes. like cool. in March when yep. we get a lot of rain mm-hmm. and a lot of nasty yep. weather. Right. Oh. So that's the way you started. Yeah, and Brian Brian showed up for a week, and then they shut everything down. Um, we 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 called him and said, "Hey, listen, like we need we need you back here. We we know that it's <laughs> it's a uh, natural national emergency or whatever you want to call it, but you know, we kind of need you back." And and, and thankfully, he kind of committed to it and came back. And I think he was probably the only one traveling. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, he was traveling from South Carolina, and he was he was he was coming back and forth, staying wow. in the hotel rooms, all the things that uh, I guess they told you not to do, right? So. Well, yeah, he was like the only one on the plane, yeah. <laughs> he yeah. was right. only one at the Hampton Inn, yeah. Yeah. which makes it safe, I guess. But yeah, really. there you go. <laughs> so, so you guys kept working through through that. It sounds yep. like yeah, and. No, no, the, the, the golf course didn't open up. You just kept was, working. Yeah. And it turned out to be a blessing as well. Cause like we were like, ultimately the work sort of bled into areas that we never really ant- anticipated and, and being closed for that time kind of got it. It allowed us to kind of sod everything and be like, okay, like we kind of avoided a disaster in the sense that like we would have had to shut down holes. But we didn't. We never did. So. so that was a time when you were bringing in bent grass sod, yep. because I know you did a lot of strip and flip in other phases. But mm-hmm. but th- that was a time where you were bringing in. We used as much. We used as much of our natural sod that um, you had. Yeah, that we have. So we, there, we was some, some there was some existing approaches. And there was yeah. there was, um, you know, like we were stealing from one area to, to take to another, and then. Mm-hmm. In one area, one specific area, we'd bring in the bent grass and um, just kind of trying to make that. If hole number two looks consistent with the grasses, then mm-hmm. that entire hole was sodded, and the rest of it was kind of the na- our natural turf. And um, we tried to make it look as like it was blended in, and it was always been there. And um, so there was just it was kind of a cut and paste of what we were doing. And, um, whatever we could do it's it's you know we ultimately had to buy sod no matter how you looked at it that's right yeah so that was phase one were yep. phase d- were the other phases already discussed and and finalized you yeah were- i mean we came up short in in phase one to just the amount of um work that was coming up on the spring we had 10 guys working for us mm-hmm. um 
you, had COVID. you know, we kind of had to talk to the board and say, hey, listen, like, we're better to pull the plug on. We've got everything done right now. Don't start anything else. It's it's time. Good. And uh, we, we kind of had to pull the plug just because of you have eight guys working and then um, the, the workload gets a lot just your regular workload in the spring is big enough. You That's you right. You don't need to tack on a construction project with it. Yeah, you you did, and you did it with eight guys essentially. Yeah, like so, and so you were golfing on those holes in the summertime. Of that so year. once May came around, then yeah, we were like May first. I think May second was when we opened back for golf, and yeah. it was like they had a whole bunch of rules for. You know, you could play in a twosome, and it was tee times every 50 oh, minutes yeah. apart. And, it was ridiculous. Um, you couldn't eat single carts and all the things that, you know. The single the single cart thing was, like, uh, became very difficult for places mm, that were hammering golf, right. you know. And, and, ev- and everyone. It yeah. lingered a long yeah. past. It lingered yeah. a long time. Yeah, okay, so that was 2020. You um, you were then preparing. You were you were they were playing golf at your place and then you were preparing for the next winter, which w- is that what you call phase two? Yep. Okay. So, so tell, so tell us about the scope of phase two. You want to go? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Let's hear it. So for phase two, we did have to shut the whole front nine down. Okay. Um, so everyone that was here starting in October, um, they would go play the back nine in a double loop. Mm. The pro shop had everything set up to where, you know, they can get 18 holes of golf in for the most part in the morning. And then in the afternoon, it was just uh, set up for nine holes. But um, we focused on the non-original greens. So one, four, six. And then we did some work that we didn't get to do to seven, I think, the year prior, which was just expanding the original green, mm. adding in the old mounting feature, taking the bunker out. Um, but that green was original. So we didn't touch the actual contours, just expanded around the edges um, of that green. But yeah, Brian went through and, and we did the strip and flip process for everything. USGA mix went in and, and just completely bulldozed those sites and, and rebuilt them. Okay, so real interesting. Okay, so it starts by stripping out the existing POA bent, a lot of POA. POA. Right, POA. Yeah, pretty much predominantly all POA. Okay, so it, by stripping out the existing POA, then they dug out a, a 12 inch cavity or a 16 well, inch? It, Brian's a little bit more extravagant right. than he, that. He had <laughs> to work, the surrounds needed a lot of work. That's uh, the majority of his work, although his greens are absolutely fantastic. Um, the surrounds work it really highlights everything. So he did a lot of work massaging the surrounds and spent more time actually on the tie ins around the green than the green itself in some regard. Now, does new mix go into the surrounds or is it just a native soil? It's stripped. There's, there was a lot of topsoil brought in, I think sometime in the 60s, 50s. And, yep. and okay. so we mined all that out, put it to the side and put it back on top and after then he was it. done working in the, the land, yeah. Okay, so so the only the only media that came in this go around was, was USGA mix. We also, we also expanded our sixth fairway um, we had to raise it up significantly. Oh, um, so a lot was, of fill for that. Right. So we had to bring in a lot of fill for that. But other okay. than that, yes. Yeah. 100, okay. 140 truckloads. So. Just, just a small <laughs> amount. <yeah. laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, it, it was a pretty I, steep, I do remember that yeah, one hillside now. that had to be – because now – so that was rough. Now is fairway. The original hole played as a as like a kind of a two-tier fairway into a quasi punch bowl green. But oh, you have man. two modes of attack to play the hole. So he wanted to restore – your ability to play from the top when the pin's on the right-hand side and the bottom when the pin's on the left-hand side. Holy cow. Okay, so this we also, like, you, you've, this is so exciting. This, I mean, you've really got a lot going on. You had told me that, that this fall you've got, like, people coming in to see the golf course from yeah. all over the place, right? Like, right. like we're, I'm not the only one that's excited about this. <laughs> you, everyone's excited about this. Tra- a Travis Society, you said? Yes. like yeah. yeah, they're coming on Sunday, actually. Oh, it's that's cool. Sunday. So, yeah, they must be thrilled to see this. Um, okay, so back to phase two there. Um, you, so so that's, when, that's when a lot of this real shaping and, um, and certainly you were now building greens. You had, you had the first phase, you didn't take a sod cutter to any green surface. No. Now, now you've done that. Right. Um, so now it's like 
it's a must do. You know, I got to put this thing There's back no together. Back. Once no, once, once, once that once goes in. <laughs> that sod cutter comes out. <laughs> yeah, there's no turning yeah. back. Mm-hmm. All right, so that's good. Um, when were you able to reopen the golf course again that year? It was pretty much the same time frame we opened up in it, May. April 20... I'm going to take any... any more. Yeah. <laughs> April 27th or 8th, I think it was. Yeah. Th- that's yeah. the other thing about this. This is like a total transformation while the golf course stayed open. Like it, like members members played. Like you right. said they, yeah, they played, sometimes they, they had the to play nine. the back nine twice for yeah. a couple months, but but you know, but in, in any given year they were playing the full golf course throughout all this. Pretty much at at some point in the year they were yeah, because um, once once opening day happens, then it was a full eighteen holes up until that that same it, fall when we closed the back nine, and they had to do the same thing on the front. But that shutdown period, if you think about October, you get November golf, but after that, it's it's nothing. So it, it's a, it's a yeah. small shutdown. Yeah, period. of the of the doable golf season, you're really only shutting down maybe six weeks in the fall and six weeks in the spring. Yep. Right. It's not much. Right. So, well, that's okay. Yeah, this is an, that's another major thing about this. So um, any, any hiccups in, well, I know there was hiccups. Plenty. Yeah. <laughs> no, it went perfect. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, we, uh, we had crown hydration. We got smoked by winter. Oh, that um, was this phase two yeah, winter, right? Yeah, we got smoked yeah, by out winter. Of that. Um, yeah, that was, that was a hiccup. That was, that, well, and tell it stuck, us that like, story. Well, we had um two well i guess with two greens on the back nine that were got whacked um you know it was you, you know it's coming it, like you that winter you, the the greens were full of ice and it thaw and then it melt and you could just see it it was we would shovel it didn't yeah, matter it, no matter what you did you couldn't it just you couldn't do anything to prevent it it got us you know and, yeah and it, it got other people and, and the, that that was the spring of 22 yeah I, yeah yeah and that mm-hmm. yeah there was some low morale uh, uh, in the area yeah that and, that and spring it, it's a gut punch and mm-hmm. it's like uh you know you know there's other people in the same situation as you are but it doesn't matter yeah because at that point in april when the membership's out playing golf they're only playing golf at your place because it's too cold they don't <laughs> they, they don't want to go out and travel and waste yeah. their good rounds on good other golf courses so the pressure the pressure is on you pretty pretty heavy to you know get everything back and that's a really interesting perspective that you said you're right like that in the summertime they're out all over the place oh, yeah. and, and and so they can <coughs> see the you know what other places look like but yeah, when there's only about three hours in the day that's decent enough to play golf, you're mm. only playing at your own place. Yeah, right. So you already might have the winter blues to begin with, yeah. and then like you so know, you, yeah. <laughs> and you got nine holes, and two of them are temporary. So oh. I mean, like it, it, it just it made the pre- the pressure was significant. I mean, and yeah. a lot of people weren't back to work yet. Yeah, so were, oh, yeah. we, we had a, still a yeah. crazy inf- yeah. yeah influx in play that just added uh, to the pressure but yeah great so, point. yeah there was some significant hiccups right <laughs> was it um i mean were, yeah you were playing it from both angles too i mean you're out in you're out doing this job mm-hmm. in the field and then you're also back here in the clubhouse talking about it mm-hmm. and having meetings and explaining and yeah. presenting and yeah a lot of communication Could you, you couldn't that. find any fescue find fescue for that's right in the yeah, northeast could, oh, there was absolutely right. no fine fescue sod to be had thankfully oh. we didn't put in any bunkers um, so we, because yeah you couldn't get sand yeah so thankfully we, yeah. we had no bunkers put in in that phase yeah, two we removed all the bunkers yeah so. it was only removal short oh, grass addition wow. greens but there was no sand for bunkers available but thankfully we didn't build any that was so so yeah if i could throw a theme on phase one was like covid screwed you up by just the sheer surprise factor of it it was brand new labor shut down the world shut down then the following winter covid was better and more things were open but we were at the height of supply issues yeah what is it like portland like was on fire right yeah seed was 110 degrees oh yeah there was no seed right yeah yeah 
died and the whole crop just yeah. burned up yeah yeah so i mean that was a i think right before we got a call like five days before opening day and they're like we got you find fescue and we're like okay we'll take it and <laughs> slapped it down and like nothing to see here yeah nothing just, to see we're, we're all green because everybody's together, like well yeah. what are they why don't why don't they saw those and why, what are they doing yeah. why aren't they finishing yeah, we tried them? hydro seeding but there's not good enough weather to grow that seed well fine mm. fescue already really needs like it's so slow to begin with yeah, yeah. it's it's three four weeks to germinate and then like really another year to kind of mature which yep. I'm sure is what happened with the side. And that's why they crunch. were holding those fields. Was right. Like they had to, to get it so that they were able to harvest it. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, yeah, there was, there was some hiccups. So, yeah. so that was, that was the hiccup. That was where the hiccups then, um, there was more. Yeah. There was plenty more. <laughs> there was more. But, but yeah, but that, I, I actually do remember coming in here th- during that time and it, yeah, that spring with the crown hydration and like you said, you weren't the only place. And I remember like talking with you guys and kind of getting the sense like, they're they're deep in the hole right now like no. like 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 you were in the middle of the tunnel like the like the yeah. entrance yep. was way behind you yeah. no the, going back the exit was <laughs> way in front of you yeah it was ugly yeah yeah so okay it got better from there yes uh yeah. you 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 um well uh, well yeah. well so <laughs> we had a great june <laughs> we, had a, yeah. we had a great june how did you get out of the crown hydration issues like uh how what would what did you do for that you uh, you had temporaries we had temporaries we air we didn't want to seed the greens because of how much poa we had mm. we knew you put all that effort into to maintaining yeah. the original putting surface right now you're going to have two holes that have a big strip of bent grass in the middle and even of them. We, we had some small pockets too because there's so many bowls and like low collection points and and trench runoffs that travis built into the greens because that's how they drained you know, back before there was any internal drainage. So we had some small pockets to deal with on green. So we went out, we plugged. Um, thankfully, we had a good nursery. So mm-hmm. we went out and plugged some areas, aerified. Um, once the weather started kind of being on our side, we hit the fertility train a little more than mm-hmm. we would normally do in the springtime. But a lot of it was just having patience. And that was kind of the message that we kept pushing out to membership was that if you're patient, we're going to do it right and get it right. And it's going to be the way that it should be if we try to rush and seed or do all those things that um, would make it look better now, either it's going to be a waste of money because it's not going to work or it's not going to be the result that we want moving forward. So we kind of took the stance of we're going to do it right and, and, and it patient. worked out. Yeah, the patience and it, 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 I mean, it, it tested the patience too. I oh, mean, yeah. It was like, uh, it seems like every every spring now we're, we're waiting, waiting, and waiting for grass to grow. And mm-hmm. It's just, a, you know, we went through our, our invitational, which is our marquee event, and we were certainly not perfect, but, um, you know, in, in reality, we're a lot better off for being patient. Um, and I'm, I'm sure there were some members that weren't happy about it, but the reality of it is is, is if, if you continue to do the right things, the right things will happen. That's and, exactly and right. It's it's, it, it's tough to sell, but you got to just stay the course. You, you got to stay, yeah, stay the course. Stay the course. Yeah, do what you know is right and the results always work out. Here's a here's a specific question. When do you feel like you felt comfortable about those areas? What weekend? What June, week of or, the or year? July. I think it was it was like July yeah r- right fun. around the, the member guest time we were starting to see some success but not not where we wanted them yeah but, but yeah once once we got into that first week of july and yeah july I 4th mean, like, we really hit a good stride for for like all the all the bank grass that we had and like we the, we the bank grass wasn't moving you know like so the side seams were still there you know like all the things that we were kind of like battling it just it i wouldn't say that it wasn't well received but i'm I, I think everybody was kind of starting to feel like uh, we didn't know what we were doing, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. You know, but, like, it's the, it's the, 
you know, everybody would say, well, when's this going to happen? And when's this going to happen? And it's like, when we start growing, and it, we're, we're mm-hmm. going to happen. And I mean, it, it started happening, and, and I think it was kind of July. And then we got into a drought. Oh, right. oh yes, yeah, summer of so 22. Then, yeah. My goodness. So just as everything yeah. got established, then it was put to the test. Yeah. How's your irrigation? Uh, old. Yep. Uh, I know that's on the docket. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Next year, yeah. 2024. Yeah. So did it? I mean, did it get you through this? This growing? Like you've been growing in for three years. Was Thankfully, it? we we did install new irrigation around anything that we did, like the green surround. So the green surrounds got all new, and if we did any other work, we we put all new pipe in. If we mm-hmm. had to drop pipe, raise pipe, move around the construction. So we did install some new stuff, but the coverage sometimes where we needed it the most wasn't sufficient enough obviously you have to do a lot of hand watering to begin with with all that all the side yeah yeah so that you're not going to avoid that um but yeah it it definitely it put us to the test that going through that the irrigation wasn't necessarily the problem that the problem was the water source oh so halfway through july we had to shut the rough down oh so just ran out just ran out. while we were gonna run out yeah um you know, at the end of August, we were probably two weeks away from, from yeah. running out of water. What do you, and so how, what's your water source situation? You have well We have and a garden hose coming from uh, the cold house, <laughs> and we got a garden hose yeah. coming from a well. Yeah, unfortunately, our wells, uh, some have collapsed. Others we've tried to drill for in, in years, way, way uh, you know, in the past from, from current times. But... Um, there's no good well sources in this area. It says that in the history books. Right. It does. It does. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And our city feed needs need a, needs an upgrade based on how much water is needed. You have an irrigation pond that you fill and right. draw and from. Yeah, and it's just our marquee. It's our... Yes, right, it's, 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 it's one the, of the, the 18th tee box is island out into that pond. Right, so right. It, it's tough seeing it low yeah. mm. and hitting across. And not a having pond, to, yeah. yeah, it's like a dry lake bed. <laughs> right. But it's good, though. We have the old guys here that have been here for like 40 years. They're like, ah, it's not that low. Oh, We're my like, God. Oh we've God. seen it lower. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we've run out a yeah. couple of times. Yeah, yeah. It's no big deal. So you'll fill it from a well. You'll fill it from the city line. Yeah. You'll fill it. We have a reservoir. Oh, yeah, right back behind us. Yeah, behind the 12th hole. That's right. Kind of sits within a little low point in the mountain there. Does does that overflow onto into this pond as well? No, no, it's not below. Uh, sorry, that is yeah, that is below the the pond on eighteen. So oh, uh, so now yeah, we got a, we have a pump that we can push. Right. You know, yeah. so we're we're all good. It's just you know we can use that water, but that water isn't renewable. Yeah, right? that's right. So like you just you're just using your reserves. And, yeah, that's um, right. I mean, man, there was there was some days we mm. were sweating. It was, it was very dry mm-hmm. last last summer. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, we 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 went like a good like six weeks without any measurable rain. Well, we, really. I mean, man, we watched so many storms just break up. Right. And, like, yeah, the bubble effect. Yeah, we just cry, crushed, mm. and <laughs> crushed, crying ourselves to sleep. <laughs> well, you know, I try not to make this thing like a like a Earthworks commercial, but mm. uh, talking about all this sod that you're doing and everything, I know you guys used a lot of the Myco Replenish, the 333, and Renovate Plus. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. bo- both of those were a key part of your establishment, mm-hmm. which, you know, I, I, I know you, you, you thought worked well, right? I mean, yes, like, absolutely. yeah, because, like, that you know you're you're so limited by by water by weather by trying to get things open by by doing all that and those products really do knit things down very quickly yeah. help mature very quickly and our soils here are not very good right. being where we are so it's right. so important because we noticed our first year so we didn't use in 2020 when we did phase all that work, one yeah we didn't we didn't use the renovator or, or any of that and and we saw what happened and mm-hmm. that's why we needed to use it because it just wasn't going to work without giving the soil something any type of nutrients because even though it was it was topsoil that was sitting there it didn't have any nutrients in it that's right you also i know like b- with the strip and flips you were kind of like you would you would apply c3 to the sod before you cut it like yeah. to areas or parts of the fairway approaches whatever like so you had good vigorous plants going into going into it as well um 
which yeah, that that that's another key part of factor. Yeah, that but, was when we were first, we just just first started to use it right mm -hmm. before the project. Um, oh yeah, in the so, fall of yeah, of, so those areas the, did really well. Yeah, that was that was interesting. Well, yeah, they were they were an important part of our recovery as well from the oh. winter kill. Um, you know, yeah, we the, were triple three. the triple three was big for us. Oh, it, with that crown hydration yep. when you were mm -hmm. punching holes and the C yeah. three and yeah, I mean we were they were big parts of it as well. So, okay, yeah, excellent. Uh, yeah, yeah. Talking about all the limitations, you know that that you had to deal with both time and you know and and lack of material and lack of water and everything like that it's it's you're using good agronomic programs and and strategies to yeah, fill in desperation those. oh dude <laughs> <laughs> whatever <laughs> kitchen total make throw, it happen. throw the kitchen sink at her and see what happens yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. okay so now now that would that's through phase two that was kind of when did all that earth moving happen or bringing in all that that fill for um the fairway was that phase three uh two oh that phase, was in yeah, two so that was on well. the sixth hole so as oh, as dude. the green was being built that material was brought in and he kind of worked his way out so from that side of the property worked his way out so okay and then the last winter which was this past winter you you did the same on on the on where the back nine the back nine yeah yeah back nine closed that one we had a new green being built, so our new 10th that's not open yet, that green site was built and the approach, uh, when we install the irrigation system in 24, we'll pipe that in and we'll seed and reshape the fairway up there so that could be opened up um, for that fall into the following season. Okay. But So that was built along with, with the back nine work. Oh, wow. Yeah. So there still is, there's still seed to be thrown out there. Yes. But yeah, there's still work to be yeah. done. Yeah. And this is kind of like, like, out of all the changes, Brian's probably most excited about this one, just to oh, really? recapture a par five that's been lost for years. Okay, explain this one a little bit more to me. So so it's na it's been currently a four? Yeah, currently it sits as a four. The original green site sits back and left of where the current green mm -hmm. 10 sits. Mm -hmm. uh, so right now it plays as kind of like a, a small dog leg right. This plays kind of right and then back left a little bit. Oh, for excellent. a par five, um, but the green site was always there. He kind of scraped away. It was like an old dump, um, so we hauled a bunch of material out. He scraped away and he found what he feels is the original contours, and it was carved into the side of like ledge rock. There's this big oh, like glacial gosh. ledge rock off to the right side of the green. So um, he was able, we had a jackhammer obviously to, to get the cavity in there, but he was able to recapture that exact green space that he feels was was there when it was built uh, in the twenties. So the green you're treating it right now. It's it's yep, there it's active, and you're treating it's it, yeah, but but it, it it's not getting in. played. Not yeah. yet. No. Yeah, it's way back there, and and you still have to grow in the fairway and the surrounds. This yeah, the approach is there. The the green surround is there. We we did all that work, so that could be mm -hmm. ready to go because we're going to need to use it as a 19th hole during the irrigation system. Uh, yeah, yeah. Install. Um, so this way we can keep 18 holes open. Um, there's been a lot of patience over the past few years with hole closures and course closures so to not take away um any hole of play while we're out there uh, or to minimize the impact um that we're going to have we're, we'll have a 19th hole so if we got to close any given hole to put the laterals in they're going to have a par three to play uh, up on the new tent okay um yeah so that's the, that's the way forward there yeah uh with with the so now you have some greens that have a USGA mix and some that have native soil. Uh, have you um, ha have they been draining evenly? Do you is it like do are are the are the mixes running like lightning and your native soil not so much? Do you do you see the difference in Chase and Wilt in the summertime? It it depends. It the microclimates I think dictate more of that than anything okay um, our greens have always drained really well the originals just because of the way they're built a lot of times a lot of slope so much, a lot of well, shape yeah, and, yeah. And there's been so much sand build up over the years and yeah mm -hmm. a lot of really good cultural practices yeah. from it from decades of of good greens keeping that's um, right and yeah but the, the the contours of the greens sheet a lot of water off to begin with um and there's definitely been a difference in some hotspot areas and stuff we, we discovered uh some 
different layering issues in some of the greens that we had pulled up from construction when they were rebuilt. The old um, push up. The mm -hmm. old, the, yeah, they, when they redid those greens from their original and built what, the, what we had taken away now to bring back the original, mm -hmm. we noticed there was layering issues and there was things in there that weren't good, um, which now have been remedied with, with the new mix in there. So I've definitely seen a lot of good, good drainage, more so drainage in, in a couple of greens that were it's always improved. too wet. Yeah, yeah, yeah not too dry, but too wet. Um, yeah, well, that's really good. How about, are they, are they the cavities variable depth in, or, I mean, because we're talking about so much slope and change on the surface, do you feel like you have areas where, like, your root mix might be 24 inches deep, you know, and it's some areas where they're, it's more like 8 inches, or we, what do you think? We kind of had known that this was going to be an issue, and we'd, sure. we'd ask for it, but I think I think the, the greens are so complex that it made it really difficult to kind of... Your greens are solid. incredibly complex. Yeah. Like, I don't... That didn't exactly come out here in this podcast. I, I, I really, again, refer everyone to your Twitter handle. What is your Twitter handle, James? I think it's James underscore Sirico. Yeah. 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 I don't know if it's a James there, underscore maybe. Sirico yeah. 23, maybe. Well, you'll, yeah. you'll find it. Yeah. Yeah. But, but anyway, I mean, you can get a good sense as to what these things look like because truly, like... The, the 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 slope and the the movement uh, from from like you're saying the whole surround it's not really like three acres of green surface we're talking about mm -hmm. it's more like dan you mentioned you think it's more like 10 acres mm -hmm. or so of, of construction of, of construction yeah. Yeah. yeah which is really mainly approaches and surrounds mm -hmm. and greens yeah, yeah it's really yeah. it's a lot it, and and there's a lot of movement a lot of movement mm -hmm. so yeah to do a variable depth sitch on that it would be very yeah difficult. i think it just it, it got to the point where um there was so much movement in that in those greens that i i think it was intimidating i mean we'd kind yeah. of talk to guys to to see what it would take to do it and they kind of said you know we'll, we'll try and, and it just it ended up being you know, we're, we're, we're good. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's just too, too difficult to match it. And it's also the nature of this golf course being built on the side of the mountain like this. Yeah. Like you've like, it's always dealt with some areas that have some root zone and some areas that have very little root zone. Right. It's just, yeah. it's the yeah. way this place is. Yeah. But ultimately I don't think that not doing the variable depth has caused us any there issues. Was, uh, looking back on it. I mean, I think we were trying to, I don't know. Over-engineering? No, I, I don't know about that. I mean, I think we were just trying to put ourselves in a good position. Sure. But this didn't put us in a bad position either. Right? No. Like, it, it's like, you know, I think ultimately you look at it and you're like, hey, look, like, how do we make this the best we can possibly do? Like, the best possible outcome for it. And you kind of think that's what it is. But ultimately, you're splitting hairs at that point. I want to like I want to kind of recap a little bit about just some themes that I see in in the work that you guys did here uh, and are, are ongoing still really and a lot of that is been efficiency you 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 were very efficient in doing this work and also like there was a lot of respect paid to the membership in that like you you kept you they they didn't close this golf course like you were able to keep playing on it and also like all the communication you've done you 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 know all the communication plus all the work you did in house like you that that goes back to the efficiency mm -hmm. you did so much work in house um you did so much work in in off seasons and and pieced it together over time so that you can maintain a golf course and and maintain a, a country club like i think it was just it was just really well done for the whole greater community of north jersey country club i'm sure i, I mean yeah i i think you know we talk about it a lot like um when we got into the project it was it was tough to convince people we were going to get rid of bunkers and mm -hmm. um it was tough to say that hey like we're going to put mounds here and, um and then you know like a lot of the things like oh you're just going to make it easier you're just going to make it easier and, um you know our our 
our feeling was is that it, it's in a perfect world you shut it down in August and you know right you don't open back up until July but it's a golf course and the grass grows mm-hmm. you know and as long as you got roots there you, you can you play, can play. Yeah. Um, you know I, I I don't know I, I think I think a lot of it is just you you're gonna mature into it sure um you just got to know when that time to say okay like we're ready to start um we're ready to start maturing and and you know what you, you can take some hits on not being ready but the golf course is open for people to play golf that's and, right and um oh well, this is a active club and i think it was important for us to kind of we 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 needed to be able to to turn it back to them quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, we gained a lot of trust to having yeah. done three phases, and especially with the first one being all in house. I think we we gained a lot of their trust, having them not having known what to expect, giving little pieces at a time, being really transparent, and then after the first two phases, they knew exactly what to expect on the third. So it was a lot easier to sell and and for them to know, hey, like we're gonna get this to where you want it to be, just because they had seen it before and they had gone through now two years of it. That's key. That yeah. I think that's really key. You did. You gained a lot of trust. I'm sure there was some for there was some forethought in like what you selected for your phase one. You know, impact mm-hmm. tr- right. again, trying to build into like the yeah. trust the trust building factor. Yeah. Wow, that's cool, and and everyone's happy. Is that uh, no? <laughs> yeah, no, okay. I, no. It, it, I'm shaking my head because I'm I'm surprised. To, uh, it yeah, everybody's happy, and yeah. I think you know, it, like we've hit we've hit some issues where we've got to learn new greens, and mm. um, sometimes you you miss on pin placements and new greens, and sometimes you uh, you know like there's one green in specific is a difficult green and okay um what we've what, had what green is that and what's different number one about number it? one green oh number one yeah, green yeah, yeah. yeah. and one what's green. hard about it it's like anything it's like unlike anything you've ever seen i guess yeah, it's there's, a firm there's, opening handshake yeah. to, to uh, start your round you got a, yeah. like a long par five and to reach that green in two is challenging but it also sits up because your second shot you're usually playing from below if you're going forward in two you have you're still uphill but not as significant okay um but there's there's a a big false front Mm. and kind of the the back and the sides run away from you to collection areas and there's a big trough coming down the center and then to the left so there's a left pad a back pad and then two kind of rumply parts on the right hand side with a false front so there's not a lot of room to miss, and on the first hole, it, that's a tough. That's a tough opening hole. So to what's, get the pin right there, pin? what's the toughest pin? What's the toughest pin there? All of them. All. Of them. <laughs> <laughs> there's no easy pin. There's no easy and, pin. But, <laughs> which is okay, like it, right? Uh, but a lot of it that's was just okay. There's so much movement in them that we were, we were shooting ourselves in the foot. Hmm. Um, we were putting them into places that were, they weren't ideal. But we were, we'd look at them and you'd say, okay, like it isn't too bad. Right? I think but it's good, yeah. And then yeah. the wind would pick up, yeah. the dew would be gone, that morning moisture is gone. The speed would, would pick up, and right. you know, like, I don't know. We, In the we, couple years I was cutting cups, I certainly got the like 10 o'clock phone call yes. that yeah. was like, yep. you're yeah. going to have to move this thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's no good. Yeah, <laughs> and I mean, like, we've, we kept the greens pretty quick last year. And we're, like, I, I think we were. We were sensitive to the fact that, like, we were under construction. Um, you know, there was there was a lot of things going on. Winter kill. The winter and kill, and, mm. and then we kind of rushed the fact that we wanted the original, sorry, the new greens to match up to the old greens, and so we were doing the same things, and that first green ended up being faster than the the rest of them. Mm. And we got ourselves into a bit of a pickle with it, and you know, by the time October had come along and they were we didn't even have to look at them and they were stupid fast yeah the leaves were flying off of them without a leaf blower (laughs) and and like that's when you realize that like sometimes you know you you put so much emphasis on speed of the greens that 
you're not doing yourselves any favors. So, you know, we kind of reconsidered our thoughts on, on green speeds and kind of t- toned it down a bit. Um, and I mean, that's always good. Well, I, I, we still, I'm like, you old still, we're still old trying to find I'm, the old ladies medium. are still cursing me. Uh, out. Yeah, I mean, they're like the, uh, they're yeah. so slow. I'm like, okay. well, we try to get them slow. faster for. <laughs> yeah, we started the year out this year with slower speeds, higher height of cut. We kind of learned our lesson from the mm-hmm. from the year prior. Okay. And have slowly worked our way back to what we feel is an acceptable speed for everybody. It's yeah. always good. Yeah. yeah, I think we, you know, you you kind of gradually pick it up. Then it's a little bit different. But we were just brand new green we weren't doing ourselves any favors it right yeah we tried to go into the member guest having our normal member guest conditions but not having had all the growing time prior to, to get them to that point. which is when what what time of year is member guest uh so it's it's father's day weekend oh yeah uh, way early so that's yeah. early yeah yeah, yeah it, for, for for new stuff it's early. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Mm-hmm. yeah every uh to, to ev- everything has a season you know yes. and yeah. you, you do you got to ease through it the the and the uh, having a flow <laughs> yeah, that's it that's it well that's cool guys I, they think this was a really good story i mean uh anything uh, do we miss anything i mean we kind of hit that phase one, phase two, phase three. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, the, I also, I do appreciate you, uh, a, a couple of really good tidbits about this. It was about like being patient. Um, another great thing I heard um, was thankfully you had a great nursery so that when there were hiccups, when there was winter kill or little pockets that needed some, you could plug, you know, um, and yeah so uh, but but the key one was like stay the course be patient roll with the punches um and communicate yes mm-hmm. always yeah. communicate yeah. Yeah. yeah it's uh yeah it's a big thing <laughs> <laughs> yep. for sure well um i hope you have fun with the traffic society they're gonna have mm-hmm. a lot of fun out here mm-hmm. i know you, you i don't know how you guys aren't playing but they'll be out here playing and and yeah, Brian Scheid will be back. Oh, Brian will be yeah. back for it? Yep. Oh, great. So that'll be a great. really good day. Was this, is this his only Travis redo? Or has he done others? No, he, He's done. He did Hollywood. Oh, he did Hollywood. Um, okay. He did work at Garden City Garden with, City. with Tom Doak, right? Yep. yep. Um, so he's, he's, been at, he's been at quite a few. He knows, he knows it really well. Uh, he's a student of it. He, he, right. That's the best thing about him. You know, he's, he's, he's the, visited them all. Yeah. He, he knows the he's slopes and contours and. Yeah, he's he's a big time studier of all that kind of stuff. Yeah, well, I, he nailed this. You guys nailed this. It's uh, it's a lot of fun. Check out the media. Get on the, the social media content that James puts out. We'll also have some more with this as well. Hopefully, we can get some pictures. We'll add to this because, um, yeah, excellent, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dan. Thank, Thank you, James. Yeah, Thank you, listeners. Out. Glad we can make this work. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, good story, and it all worked out. All right, all the best. See you later.